We'll just run through a bit of Scottish history for you. Um, Scotland and England have had a turbulent past. In 1286, the Scottish crown passed to Margaret, who was only three years old at the time. Sadly, she died just four years later. This sent Scotland into turmoil. Edward I of England was asked to arbitrate for the Scottish nobles who were competing for the throne. The King of England set about undermining the cho chosen Scottish monarch and in 1296 he invaded Scotland. Along came William Wallace. Wallace was a Scottish knight who became one of the main leaders during the wars of the Scottish independence. A Scottish knight loyal to Edward turned Wallace over to soldiers at Roybriston in 1305. Wallace was tried for treason, with no jury, lawyers or a chance to defend himself. Of course, he was immediately found guilty. Wallace was sentenced to the traitor's death, one of the most vicious punishments in the medieval era. Wallace was taken to the Tower of London, where he was stripped naked and dragged behind a cart to hear Smithfields. London's oldest execution site. It was here that Wallace was hung drawn in quarters. His head was tarred and put on display atop the gatehouse of London Bridge. His limbs were then sent to Perth, Stirling, Berwick and Newcastle, while some parts of him were then sent to Aberdeen. Many were hanged here, including Watt Tyler, who was cut down by the Mayor of London, John Badby, who was burned in a barrel, and Richard Rouse, who was boiled to death. The killings of hundreds of people put, took place just outside this, these doors of a monastery built in 1123. The priory extended right out to this archway you can see here, and the gatehouse was built in 13th century. However, the residential building above the arch was built in the 16th century. Parts of the Priory managed to survive the dissolution of Henry VIII by becoming a parish church for the people who lived in the area. The Norman chancel and apse survived from the original 12th century Priory. The parts that didn't survive the dissolution was the nave and sadly the churchyard which you can see here is all been built over and paved. The piano music was actually playing in the church when we were going around, so I have left some of the original sounds on, so you will hear me talking a little bit. But the Priory has a reputation for curative powers. Many sick people came here years ago looking to be cured, and some of those cures are still used in the Barth St Bartholomew's Hospital, which is also nearby. I will be doing a video soon about the hospital and the body snatchers and the church that was there. Um, I'll link it below when it's done. 900 years of continuous service. Started off as a priory in 1123. 
Front dates from 1405. <sighs> the church survived the Great Fire of London of 1666, but by the 18th century it was abandoned and uh, sadly it was filled with squatters and um, it became in a state of disrepair. The restoration of this church began in the 19th century and uh, the church is still attached to St Bartholomew's Hospital. Tomb of Walter and Mary, Mild May, Chancellor of the Exchequer to Queen Elizabeth I. Him and his wife's tomb were originally over the other side of the church, but they were moved during the restoration period, and their coffins were above the floor level and visible for everybody to see. This church was one of the few London churches to escape the Blitz. A man called Prior Rahir was the founder of this church. He was a courtier and a favourite of King Henry I. The Prior had took pilgrimage like many Priors did to Rome, which is where he fell ill. He prayed for his life while he was ill in saying that if he survived he would set up a hospital for the poor in London. His prayers seemed to be answered and he recovered. Rahir was a man of his word and he set up both the church, a priory of Augustinian canons and the hospital side by side here in London. This church has appeared in many award winning films. These include Four Weddings and a Funeral, Shakespeare in Love, The End of an Affair, Amazing Grace, Elizabeth, The Golden Age, and The Other Berlin Girl. It's also appeared in a number of television programs. These are including Spooks, The Real Sherlock Holmes, and The League of Gentlemen Christmas Special. This is beautiful, isn't it? So they reckon Mother Mary appeared here, or whatever, what was her name? Mary Magdalene. That's obviously a new part. Just smoky, I guess. It does, doesn't it? Solid. Right here. Yeah, that's the one we talked about. He's the one who made the pilgrimage. Is it? Is this the one he walked yeah. to Rome? Yeah. He had a. Went to Rome. Here we have the tomb of Prior Rahir, the builder of this church and the surrounding St Bartholomew's Hospital. He was a favourite of King Henry I. Many believe he was a jester 
in the king's court, but he's also been described as a cleric, a courtier and a minstrel. It's very possible he was all of those things in his lifetime. Rahir died in 1144, allegedly when he was in his late 50s, and he was quickly interred by, by the altar, as you've just seen. Of course, with the building this old and the brutal murders that went on outside the gatehouse doors, there are many tales of ghosts. In 1865, the renovations on the church began. The medieval tomb of Rahir was opened as the canopy had crumbled. It is said that inside lay Rahir's skeleton, undisturbed and still wearing his monk sandals. It is said that for a joke, one of the workmen had gone in there and uh, yeah, he'd nicked one of the sandals. But he didn't realise that in one of the sandals was Rahir's foot bone. He soon returned the shoe to the warden a few days later, but only because he's reported to have become mysteriously ill. It is said that Rahir's shoe and bones were misplaced in the renovations, and Rahir is often seen wandering the aisles looking for his lost foot. Many ghostly spectres have been reported here. Of course, you would expect that in an old building. And these include a man in the garb of a Protestant priest. And strangely, the feeling of an evil presence. But whatever you choose to believe, this church is really worth a visit. The, the ambience here was brilliant. And this is the closest I have ever been to the past. Well, candles, I guess, wasn't it? 